Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Subhash Chandran. In this video, we are going to discuss about Brownfield Engineering. So the agenda of this video is going to be the first we will talk about what is Brownfield Engineering and second we will discuss about the types of work which are being executed in Brownfield Engineering and third we will discuss about the workflow process of Brownfield Engineering because there are some difference between Greenfield Engineering process and the Brownfield Engineering process and the fourth we will discuss about the technical hurdles which are being faced in uh, Brownfield Engineering. So I hope this video will really help you to improve your knowledge in piping. So let's get started. First, we will let's understand what is brownfield engineering. In a simple note, brownfield engineering is nothing but repairing the damaged items and replacing that with the new items. So basically, almost all the process plants are uh, running uh, continuously in 24 bar 7 cycle. So it is natural that some part of the process plant will get damaged because of this continuous running. So it has to be uh, replaced. So in order to improve the safety of the plant, what happens if you don't replace and continuously running the same plant for years and years, it will lead to a disastrous scenario or it will lead to a big accident. Surprisingly, it will cause a lot of damages to the infrastructure and also to the personnel actually. In order to avoid such scenarios, generally some corrective actions are taken care. So these corrective actions are known as modifications and replacements and uh, increasing the safety of the plants by enhancing the integrity of the material. So, so this is how it's generally about actually. So brownfield engineering is nothing bad. You can understand this way actually. It is actually revamping the existing plant, increasing the integrity of the overall plant. So there are many types of jobs which are being executed in this project. So we will discuss that in the second topic actually. So let's talk about the different types of jobs which are being executed in Brownfield Engineering. So the first types of jobs is nothing but uh, replacing the damaged items. That is because as I told, uh, if the plant runs continuously for uh, a number of days and years and years actually, few of the items will get damaged. So we have to replace it in order to improve the safety. This is one type of work. And second type of work is, there are items where uh, you will not be able to buy that items in the, from the market. Say for an example, uh, control wells. You might have bought this 15 years ago or 20 years ago. But due to the technology advancement or design advancement, you will not be able to replace the same type of well. Well, I mean, you will not be able to purchase the same type of well now. So what you have to do is that you have to go for a new type of well so that you will get a maintenance, I mean maintenance support, you will get a spare parts actually or you will be able to uh, get a, a vendor support from outside, you will be able to uh, connect your technology. The outdated wells will not be able to um, have some controls uh, within the wells actually but the new wells will have a more advanced provisions. So basically what I am I'm talking about is that Observed items, see, they, that could be a valves or that could be instruments, that could be many n number of things in the process plan. So the second type of project is nothing but if some items are obsolete and if you are not able to buy from the market, you have to replace it that with the new. So the first one is the, rep I mean, repairing the damaged item and the second one is um, modifying the absolute items. And the third is an enhancement. Enhancement is something uh, like increasing the production. Let's say that you have a process plant and then it is delivering uh, some capacity of output actually. But if you want to increase the capacity of your plant, you have to increase the equipment, increase the piping, increase the infrastructure, increase the instruments, increase the civil and structural works actually. So only then, I mean you have to add something in order to increase your production. So in order to add something, you have to build all these items actually. So this is known as enhancement or revamping you can say actually. So with this you may have to install a new equipment, new piping or uh, new supports uh, or you can play within the margin available with the existing equipment. So this is basically enhancement project. Now we will go to the fourth type. Fourth type is nothing but actually. Uh, it is to um, demolish the redundant lines. Say for an example when a plant runs for a longer period of time some of the lines will not be used actually because of the advancement in the plant or uh, because uh, uh, some line got uh, uh, I mean which is not actually useful at all maybe because of a design error or something these lines uh, will remain as a redundant for longer period of time. So removing that basically 
uh, it's like uh, removing the unnecessary lines and unnecessary supports unnecessary uh, area which are occupied because of this redundant items so these are the four types of jobs which are being executed so uh, if you from the the i mean the types of jobs actually slightly varies from company to company but in the broader scale if you see actually the first type is going to be replacing the damaged items it could be a piping it could be a support it could be an equipment it could be a valve it could be anything but whatever items which are being damaged will be replaced with the new items and the second is then uh, replacing the uh, valve which are obsolete where you cannot buy from outside market and the third one is you have to enhance the plant by to increase the productivity of the plant and the fourth one is demolition demolition means demolishing the redundant plants these are the different types of uh, jobs which are generally being executed in uh, brownfield engineering as far as my knowledge there could be many other types also i am not saying no so uh, if you explore more you will be able to understand more actually now we will go to the workflow process because greenfield engineering process has uh, certain types of workflow and brownfield engineering process has certain types of workflow because this is an existing plant in greenfield plant you are starting from new there is no plan at all but here you have an existing plant there are personals there are piping there are equipments which are actually under operation so uh, the kind of engineering is differs from the greenfield to brownfield so now let's see what is the workflow process of brownfield engineering see in brownfield engineering the first the step is that the client would give you the scope of work scope of work is something like you have to replace this particular item say for an example and the client comes out uh, with saying that there is a particular length of line where uh, the thickness of the line has been reduced so you have to replace these lines this is a kind of scope of work you will get it actually with uh, an attachment such as a pnid and uh, if piping isometrics is available they will mark and give generally pnid uh, is enough to understand the overall scope so you will have the work of uh, i mean scope of work uh, along with the pnid so with this you will be able to understand the second step what you have to do is that you have to study the existing drawings which are available with you because uh, with the pnid you cannot um, map, i mean uh, you cannot understand the magnitude of the overall work because uh, in pnid uh, the, the the length of line might have been shown as a uh, shorter line but actually in reality the length of line will be more actually so what you have to do once after getting this workflow process and pnid you have to check your existing drawings so you will be able to understand from uh, i mean which part of piping the uh, they are discussing about i mean which part of piping is actually needed to be modified as per the scope of work so once you study your existing drawings you will be able to understand the overall scope then you know that uh, i mean um, the um, how much of uh, piping needs to be modified and where all you have to put additional supports and how you can modify these things actually and the third step here what you have to do is that since it is a brownfield engineering you have to visit the site i mean you have to directly go to the site and check the site condition that's because during construction there could be some errors so we cannot rely the drawings all the time especially in brownfield engineering you cannot rely the drawings 100% you can use the drawings as a reference at the very initial um, I, i mean to be, uh, initiate your project i can say but in order to conclude you have to go to the site go to the site uh, check the field dimensions and check whether your drawing has uh, the drawing dimensions are matching with your site dimensions uh, check whether the flange connections and the ratings are matching check the number of supports uh, at site basically you have to check the field site condition and please don't forget to take measurements site so these are the items maximum number of information how much of uh, information that you can uh, collect from site will be useful for you so once after the site was said you would be able to exactly say see this is the amount of line that you have to change this much of piping you have to modify this much of support you have to modify because the uh, length of line marked in the pf P, i mean uh, pnid covers this much of lines this you have to communicate to the uh, client so to communicate to the client you will uh, write something like a site observation report or site report or a preliminary uh, site visit observations we can say n number of um, names for this particular document but generally the intent is that you have to communicate once after the site visit so what we have seen now first you will receive the scope of work and pnid 
second you will study your part and third you will go to the site visit and fourth you have to report to the client then the client will agree that this is the a modification that you are going to do and we are acceptable i mean uh, we are accepting this proposal and you can go for uh, forward for your engineering then you start producing your um, drawings and all that shit so this is a kind of process and once you prepare your engineering deliverables and you will be able to uh, i mean you have to submit to the clients you will have a definite period of time to submit before uh, that particular i mean your deadline you will be submitting your documents so the client will review your documents and once if uh, the client reviews and they will have some comments and it will be mutually discussed and whatever comments that you can take you will be correcting you will be including that in your drawing uh, if some comments are um, uh, to be um, uh, if if it is needed furthermore uh, design changes and if it uh, i mean changes your scope then again you have to see the commercial part of it actually so this will be going on so once you uh, submit the package it will be reviewed from the client and client will give you the uh, comments you will incorporate those comments and finally you will submit the afc package so these are the stages so brownfield engineering is not only for piping and it uh, also uh, applies for all other uh, engineering uh, i mean all other disciplines like civil or electrical or uh, instrumentation or only process because when you receive a scope of work document actually you will be able to come to know whether it's a piping job or electrical job or cna job i mean instrumentation job or civil job some cases uh, the clients will only have the civil jobs i mean some cases they will have an electrical modification so basically the intent is to understand the workflow process scope of work study your part go to site inform the client and agree the your um, engineering terms and start preparing your drawing send to the send to the client get an approval and send the final afc so this is the workflow process now we will discuss about the technical hurdles what are the technical hurdles we generally uh, have to face in brownfield engineering so one thing we have to understand um, i mean strongly in our mind is that greenfield engineering process there is no plan but in brownfield engineering it's an operable plan it's an 100% uh, working plans which is under operation all the time so when you do some modification you cannot simply go and do the modification you have to um, shut down the plan or you have to isolate some particular uh, part of piping or you have to uh, get a uh, shut down permission uh, not only you say for an example if you are an engineering uh, consultant and you are working with a client the plan is belongs to the client so client should agree that you they will they have to shut down the plan shutting down the plan will cost a lot of uh, i mean monetary issues because Uh, shutting down the plant will uh, stop their productivity and they will have a lot of losses in terms of production that is actually directly connected to their uh, revenue and uh, uh, cost factor basically so in order to get the these alignments and you have to take a cautious decision that is what we have to understand first actually let's say for an example you have to modify some part of a piping that is the final proposal let's imagine that you came to a proposal that you have to modify certain length of a piping and you propose to this to the client and client has to agree when client reviews that the client understand the shutdown requirement for this line actually so the client comes back and ask you can you do it without shutdown so you understand the part so you first of all and when you reviewed it you understood that this needs a uh, shutdown then the client comes back to you and uh, when when they propose you that engineering consultant has to give some solutions to replace this uh, item without shutdown so basically you have to play between with shutdown and without shutdown options so this is what you have to do at the beginning of your engineering itself when you make some proposal you have to keep this in mind that you always have an option to have the shutdown and non shutdown um, uh, proposal also so because shutdown proposal generally uh, it cost them uh, it cost um, some production losses so no client would accept but the client will come back to you and says that generally what happens there will be some uh, shutdown activities uh, are uh, generally planned in a year if clients are ready to accept these activities within that period then it's okay actually but if they wanted to take uh, a shutdown only for one particular job then uh, they will not be able to agree so um, uh, you have to plan in such a way if you can get the pre shutdown planned date you will be able to accommodate within this shutdown activity itself or is what happens client may not agree you have to go with the non shutdown plan i mean non shutdown proposal i can say 
this is the major hurdle so this is um, uh, you can uh, take it for granted actually whenever you produce some engineering proposal for brownfield uh, project you have to keep this in mind you have to have a shutdown proposal and as well as modifying without shutdown proposal modifying with shutdown and i mean modifying in shutdown and modifying without shutdown so these two proposals you have to give and the second hurdle is the field mismatches say for example when you rely more on the drawing and when and uh, you don't go to the site what happens sometimes after finalizing the drawing after fabrication when these pipe um, uh, spools are taken to the site they will not be matching with the site condition because i told you uh, during construction there could be lot of errors so we do not know when these plants were constructed so what is the quality of construction so it is always important to take the field condition before starting your engineering so the first hurdle is the shutdown and non shutdown second is the field mismatches and the third hurdle is submission time because generally in brownfield project you have to deliver the projects within a short span of time so in order to deliver this uh, package within a short span of time you have to get all the inputs on time and you have to be uh, i mean you have to be very prompt in responding uh, sending your uh, communications to the clients you have to be very um, uh, quick in uh, responding to all the emails and all the uh, design actions or design discussions otherwise see uh, being a designer you have to communicate to the your designer and the designer has to prepare it actually then you have to review it if you are not in a position to understand and, and clarify the design doubts then you will not be able to produce the drawing right so in brownfield engineering this is one of the major hurdle because you will not have a more time you have to within uh, submit the uh, package within the short span of time and in some cases what happens due to the uh, shutdown dates say for an example clients might have planned these activities in the coming shutdown the coming shutdown may be within a couple of months or within 3 or 4 months so you have to prepare your package in such a way that you can deliver before the shutdowns only then procurement can be done and the fabrication can be done and the facility arrangements can be done so this is the major hurdle in the brownfield engineering so brownfield engineering uh, time factor is one of the major hurdle and communication is you have to take care because if you have to manage your uh, time factor you have to uh, be very quick in communicating or else you will not be able to i mean you will not be able to uh, complete your job on time so these are the three major hurdles first one is that shutdown and non shutdown proposals and second one is that field mismatches and the third one is deadlines you you have to meet these deadlines so these are the different types of hurdles that we generally face in brownfield engineering so i hope that this video has helped you to understand what is brownfield engineering and what are the different types of jobs which are being executed in brownfield engineering and what is the workflow process in brownfield engineering and at last fourth we have discussed about the technical hurdles which are being uh, uh, faced in brownfield engineering so i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra thank you so much